Collapsing trade signals economic bloodbath. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, one of the worst economic climates in history is now starting to take shape as global trade is collapsing and going to lead to more job losses, a global recession, and outright deflation in what will look like an economic bloodbath. But before we get into that, I want to take a look at a story that broke on Friday with some economic data, which is making everything appear, at least how they media is spinning it, that the economy is better than it looks. And then we're going to head into the U.S. freight and then into the international global trade. And you're going to see that this data that came out on Friday is just a blip in what is going to be a much bigger decline in the global economy. Let's over to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up in our chart heavy show as U.S. business activity unexpectedly jumps, risking more inflation. So here's the beginning of the story is that, hey, all of a sudden the economy got better for some reason. Now keep in mind, no economy, no data goes down in a straight line or up in a straight line. There's always going to be blips. The fact there were even blips in the midst of the deepest part of the recession during the global financial crisis. So the fact that we're seeing an upturn here isn't that big of a deal, but as we get a little bit deeper into it, it'll start to make sense of why we saw this and perhaps why we're going to see it turn down in the months to come. The S&P Global Flash April Composite. Now, just so you understand, Composite is a mix of both the Manufacturing and Services Purchasing Managers Index, rose 1.2 points to 53.5, the highest since May. And this got markets really excited as the group just reported on Friday. Readings above 50 denote an expansion, and the gauge has now exceeded that threshold for three months after contracting through the back half of the year. So all of a sudden, we had this enthusiasm in the markets, this excitement excitement that, hey, the services sector is coming alive here. It's driving the economy. Now, I do want you to understand that the manufacturing cycle and the services cycle in terms of the broad economy, they are rarely in sync and they are normally running different cycles. So as we head toward the summer months, what do we tend to see greater demand? This is what I want you to be thinking, because this report was the first two weeks of this month, which of course was a heavy travel time for spring break. But again, Keep in mind, what do people demand during the summer? Typically services, so this shouldn't come as a surprise. We saw a little blip higher here in the data. And firms saw new orders jump to the highest rate in 11 months, especially in the services sector. They allowed businesses to pass on higher costs to customers, resulting in the fastest jump in output prices in seven months. So just so you understand what is a new order in the services sector, it's typically contract-based. So to give you an example of what that means is, let's say that there is a bridge that's going to be built. Well, we know it may need steel and other manufactured products to build it, but what happens before that? That bridge is even a first shovel of dirt is moved. Well, there's an engineering firm and other companies, service related firms that come in that receive contracts and then the process starts. And that's where you see that here on the business side. Now, how about on the consumer side? Well, maybe you have a whole bunch of people that want to take a cruise in three months and they start booking rooms or they book airfare for travel. Well, all those bookings, they are contracts. Again, they're on the services side. So what we saw during the first two weeks of this month, an increase in new orders as we head into the summer months. But notably, it wasn't a giant surge as the media is kind of suggesting that it might have been. The upturn in demand has also been accompanied by a rekindling of price pressures. This increase helps explain why core inflation is proved stubbornly elevated at 5.6% and points to possible upturn or at least some stickiness in consumer price inflation. And of course, we can actually address that issue too because the services sector has struggled to get the employees they need. And of course, this is now allowing them to put some upward price pressure so they can pay their employees more. And we're seeing more of that in the broader economy as contracts come in and wages are starting to head up in the services sector. So that makes perfect sense of what we're seeing here. But the key part of this, these are all contracts. So just as a, we talked about the engineering firm, well, if the bridge doesn't get built, could that contract get canceled before it's finished? Sure. Can people cancel that vacation? Absolutely. But for the moment, we saw an uptick in the services sector. 
And S&P Global's measure of business activity of service providers rose to the highest in a year while manufacturing activity, and this one I've got some beef with, expanded for the first time since October. Firms in both sectors boosted employment by the most since July, but still reported growing backlogs amid struggles to attract and retain skilled workers. So keep in mind the manufacturing only was at like 50.3. Remember, 50 is unchanged from the prior month. So you have a 0.3% increase in the series to tell you this was wasn't really much of an increase in manufacturing sector. It was literally like a snail moving just a tad on the ground. And that's what this is indicating that virtually the manufacturing sector is unchanged from last month. But business remain upbeat about the outlook this month. Again, heading, I believe this has to do with that spring break effect. Love to know what you think with the degree of confidence in the year ahead, improving to the second highest since May. Even so, optimism remains below average due to higher interest rates and inflationary pressures. Well, I'll say that optimism is remaining low because of the layoffs we're seeing in the tech industry and just the general slowdown we're seeing. A lot of businesses are hoping for a strong summer uh, season because it's when they make most of their money particularly in the services sector that they need to get through those leaner winter months so they have to remain optimistic until everything starts to change and now let's take a look at this global trade issue let's start with the u.s freight market because i want you to understand as goods come into this country well then they hit the trucking sector and what we're seeing here is a very remarked slowdown suggesting that this little increase in the services sector data probably won't last. U.S. truckers hope to see end of rough patch for freight. And get this, truckers across North America have struggled mightily as freight demand slowed over the past 12 months, but some signs are emerging that the worst may be over, at least they're hoping. According to the latest Bloomberg Intelligence and Truck Stop survey, that we may be sitting at the lows for spot truckload demand and rates. As demand expectations for the next three to six months have improved and the rate outlook is inching up. So again, this is outlook, this is hope, this is just all kinds of unvalidated data where we don't have anything to suggest otherwise, because as we start to look at some charts now, you're going to see that this demand is all hope based and we're not seeing a whole lot of reality behind it. Here we have the Freight Transportation Services Index. Now, this is made up of both commercial freight and services. So you think about airline travel and all of that. And this is put, I put this on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And so it's, you see it has it slightly contracting here, right over on the right. And notice the periods in contraction often either lead to a recession or, as we saw here in 2015, 2016, we almost had a global recession there. In 2013, what did we have? Almost a double double dip recession coming out of the global financial crisis. You see that dip here going into a bigger drop. And of course, during the dot-com bubble, we saw a contraction there. So the notion that we're seeing this uptick in demand is not showing in that chart. And if we strip out the consumer side, the services aspect, well, the cash freight index of shipments, it's not suggesting there's a big movement here either. Because if the global economy was expanding, what should we see in both charts? The blue lines moving up. But when you see a slowdown, as you see here in the during the dot-com bubble, you see that peak going into the global financial crisis. You kind of see that kind of malaise here, kind of as we headed into what looked like another global recession in 2016 there. Didn't happen, of course. But now look, you see this kind of rounded top here in the data. And again, it's not suggesting that there's any big boom in either global trade or U.S. freight trade. In fact, the U.S. freight situation is telling us that things are pretty dire. Freight recession snares J.B. Hunt in first quarter. This from Freight Waves. While the network is oversupplied. Now, this is key. Oversupplied from a capacity standpoint. And what does that mean? Too many trucks, not enough stuff to ship. This is not what you think when you talk about inflation and demand. What we should be hearing, if the global economy was booming, we would say that it was under capacity, that there's too much freight and not enough trucks. We're hearing just the opposite. And this is a side effect from the pandemic. When 
everyone believed the global economy was surging. We put all of this resources into expanding the shipping network. And now all of a sudden, what are we seeing? Just the opposite happen. We now have too much capacity, not enough demand. And here we can see JB Hunt will be able to take on another 15 to 20 percent of incremental volume once demand improves. Hopefully it will. But if it doesn't, well, then they've got a big problem there. And look at this truckload capacity flips from unsustainably tight to unsustainably loose. So it's not just isolated to JB Hunt. This is broadly speaking in the entire U.S. freight industry. And for the first time since the economy was shuttered in the early phases of COVID-19, the outbound tender reject index, we'll explain that in a moment, has fallen below 3%, making early 2023 one of the softest sustained truckload markets since the tender data history began in 2018. So again, notably, softest data we've seen since the inception of this index. Now, how bad is it? Well, at 3%, it's terrible. In fact, it's below 3%, and here's what it means. Tender rejection rates measure how willing carriers are to accept requests from the customers to ship loads at a previously agreed upon contract rate. Rejection rates above six to seven percent indicate a tight market, while rejection rates below five say a soft market. So this is a really soft market because what it's saying is, even though uh, freight companies would love to have higher rates, they're willing to accept low rates because they have so much excess capacity. So now the question you may be asking is, Steve, wait a minute, maybe it's not in the trucking space. Maybe everything's been shifting to rail? Well, no, not really. Here we can see rail freight cart loads. Uh, this is not moving at all. This is flatline. In fact, if you want to see a slowing global economy, you can go back into the early 2000s and see just what how much car loads were being demanded at the time that fell during the global financial crisis, never quite recovered, slipped again as we headed into what looked like a global recession, never recovered, slipped into the pandemic, is still never recovered. So you get the indication here that global trade is nowhere near it needs to be to sustain the economy or the belief that policymakers are suggesting that we should experience. And now as we look to around the world, there is one commodity that gives us a great indication that demand, not just domestically, but all over the world is falling, and that is diesel fuel. It's fuel that powers the global economy. It's flashing recession signs. Here we can see in China, the number of trucks running on a highway is noticeably down in recent weeks. In Europe, diesel's premium to crude futures recently plunged to the lowest level in more than the year. And in the U.S., demand is on track to contract on demand, <laughs> demand is on track to contract 2% in 2023, and that, and they are assuming some of the worst economic climates in recent memory outside the global financial crisis and the pandemic. And that is a huge red flag, my friend, because diesel is critical. So we could start to look at these, you know, kind of forward-looking indicators and say, is there a change that validates what the S&P Global was suggesting as we started today's show out that hey, the services sector is somewhat rebounding. Well, if diesel fuel isn't moving higher, if they're saying that inventories are going to rise, prices are going to fall, it's not suggesting that there's any sustainability in what S&P surveys said. Diesel demand can act as a leading indicator for broader growth as an early sign that spending by households is waning and expected drop in diesel demand fits with building recession risk, and not only across the country, across the world. And here you can see it from an inflationary standpoint, U.S. diesel sales in blue against consumer price index in red. Diesel fuel is just shown in dollars per gallon, not on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And if it was on a year-over-year -year rate of change, it would lead the consumer price index down. But what we're seeing is a marked decline in both. And it makes sense because if we're not seeing demand in diesel, that means we're not seeing demand in global trade. And we're not seeing a demand in that, that means demand from consumers for consumption and from businesses in terms of consumption is declining. That means inflation is heading down. And that suggests that things are about to get a whole lot worse. And we've got a couple of charts. Let's finish this diesel story up. And I've got a couple of charts that'll blow you away here. As much of the pullback in diesel demand can be tied to trucking, which consumes about 60% of diesel in China, more than 70% in the U.S. The number of trucks running on Chinese highways fell a whopping 8% in the
week ending April 9th. Commercial diesel stockpiles nationwide, excluding state refineries, ballooned to an eight-month high in early April, again suggesting there is no turnaround in the economy, that perhaps indeed what I suggested in the beginning of the show is what we're seeing out of the services sector has something to do with the spring break effect and maybe some bookings getting into the summer months for those who still at the moment think they're traveling. But of course, that can change at a moment's notice if you have you know one of the wage earners in their household lose their job well it's pretty easy to go and cancel that vacation sure maybe you lose part of your deposit but it's easy to book and easy to cancel so those aren't locked in but now let's zoom out from a global trade perspective i want to show you some charts here that will really bring this all home in blue, we have the inbound price index from International Services, which is Air Freight. And check this out. This is against the consumer price index. And what we know is that as inbound price of air freight collapses, it so too brings inflation down. And this is saying inflation is coming way, way, way down in a big way in the months to come. And how about this? What does it mean for unemployment? Again, we started the show out by saying there's going to be a rise in jobless claims. Well, here it is. Again, inbound prices index and i want you to just understand as again this is all what you're seeing is a lack of demand of course if there was demand inbound freight prices would be rising we're not seeing that so if you don't have demand you don't need employees and sure enough what do we see on this chart just as inbound price indexed heads down with a lag what do we see or what you notice actually uh, i'm not uh, with a lag you see the unemployment claims start to rise and then take off we see that happen over and over as demand for freight heads down eventually with a lag what you find out is jobless claims head higher suggesting of course not only are we going to see more unemployment we're going to see deflation we're going to see significantly lower interest rates and we're going to see a fed that's going to go from hiking to rapidly cutting in the near future. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.